No, I like I like how yeah you've you've got the the right spirit there. I think no, I, I get you, and I think like um yeah, I don't want to go too far down this road, but I uh yeah, I think it's like one of the things like I love the the Bitcoin standard or whatever, right? But then like uh, I kind of get fed up listening to safety and like shit on everything that isn't like specifically the way he likes it like on every aspect of life or or like you know i don't know i think like especially even the book i feel like he kind of went a bit off the rails as well like, so i i find that like it'd be cool wouldn't it if you had like a filter on twitter like okay from these people i only want to hear about like specific things like monetary like policy or like technical yeah. side of things yeah i mean I, I think i think the whole esg question is important to sort of work through i think bitcoin using a lot of energy is on purpose. Um, but that said, I don't think the person over here who says like, gosh, maybe we should try to burn less coal. I don't think they're an asshole. Right. And, and I, I have a hard time following, you know, especially when you can, you follow them on their podcast or you follow them on Twitter, like you, not like you know who they are, but you've been along for the ride long enough. You're like, well, hold on. When did you become an expert in that too? You know, um, and just and just hopefully we we end up at some sort of balance at some point where uh, the vitriol is is sort of toned down, right? Because Amy over here who says like I don't know, I'm just saying solar seems like a good thing, right? Just shitting on her out of the gates probably isn't the best way to bring more people into the community. As far as the ESG thing goes, you don't think that's kind of an attack on Bitcoin because like. The, from my conversations with mining people, they say that because Bitcoin incentivizes like renewable energy and capturing waste energy, it's actually super good for the environment because it incentivizes like the rollout of these cleaner types of energy. Whereas like this ESG thing to like, you know, like the change the code thing that they were doing with Greenpeace oh, so last yeah. week, like to me, that seems like they're trying to tame Bitcoin using like some kind of subterfuge. So in real life, I think that we need to be using way more power than way less, right? If we just want to, if we're really serious about bringing certainly people in third world countries to some sort of a level of some sort of standard of living, it's going to require more power. If we want to just advance as a society in general, more and more and more power. So I'm a more power kind of person than a less power. I also believe that Bitcoin doesn't care if the power comes from a carbon base or a non-carbon base, so not even like nuclear. I think people need to be leaning into nuclear faster rather than slower. And I do think that a lot of the talking points from, I'll call them the ESGers, is a bunch of bullshit that is a complete waste of time. So I'm on that page. And I guess ironically though, what I do see is now and then when I think people are just making, they're, they're not, right, they're not a political person trying to drive um, regulations or politics to achieve some sort of personal goal. It's just Ricardo on Twitter, <laughs> you know, saying like, hey, but doesn't it use, like, Ricardo is not a Bitcoiner. He's just, you know, graduated college a decade ago. He lives in Akron, Ohio. He reads, you know, Forbes and he's just a normal person. And he says, yeah, but doesn't it use a ton of electricity for this magic internet money? Because he doesn't maybe know sort of the value of Bitcoin and the inherent value of Bitcoin and the importance of Bitcoin to the world. And then he just gets shit on, right? And immediately it's like, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go over to these crypto guys because they didn't say that to me when I had a weird ass question. So there's just some areas of, I guess, maximalism that, I just, I just worry as we start, like I said, as we start trying to make that circle, who are bringing into the circle bigger, it, 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 to, to have such strict um, messaging gets, it gets hard. It, it turns people off, even though I agree with them, right? So a lot of times for me, it's, no, nah, they're right. Like it does, it, it's using that electricity on purpose. Like that's a very key part of it. And, and in fact, you probably don't want proof of stake, right? For a whole variety of reasons. So the idea I'm there, just how some of these things get pushed out is a turnoff, right? I eat, like, I eat carbs and I don't feel like I'm an asshole because I, I eat sea oils, but I also don't bring it up when I'm around Bitcoiners because they're going to just shit all over it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. And I think, um, yeah, essentially, I, I feel like, um, I, yeah, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Like, I, think, I feel like some, some maximalists 
probably put me off like uh, looking more into more and more into Bitcoin in my earlier time in, in crypto because I got involved in crypto first and then got into Bitcoin. Uh, I thought Bitcoin was like outdated dinosaur tech when I got into crypto, right? That's what I was told. Um, and then like just seeing people be absolute assholes just didn't exactly, you know, ingratiate me to the space um, or make me want to want to join the space, to be frank. Oh, should we? We'll edit this out. <laughs> No, no, nah, no worries. But yeah, like uh, essentially, like seeing people be complete assholes on Twitter or like whatever I don't know, Clubhouse, whatever it's going to be, uh, wasn't exactly. It's basically it put me off at first, quite frankly. But then I can understand why people are like that because it probably gets pretty. Well, it does get pretty annoying when like I have friends messaging me like, "Oh, hey man, what about this like coin I heard about?" And it's like this, the the eighty thousandth time you're like, "Oh, like <laughs> you know." Like, I, I, just... I look at I look at the whole thing like a, a, a one of, like a society video game. Right. So in the beginning, when, you know, certainly when Bcash sort of was springing up and the block size wars were happening and these alternative alternative chains, you know, started coming into existence, existence like um, like Monero, like Ethereum. There was a group of people who are, were staunchly committed to defending the ideas of Bitcoin. And that to me is like the army, right? When you first sort of start your village in the video game, you need like walls and defenses and everything along those lines to keep from being attacked, right? To survive the attacks. And so those are the maximalists. And without them, Bitcoin would not be where it is today, full stop, right? The amount of debt we owe maximalists is unrepayable. Um, for Bitcoin to be a decade old, or, or however many years it is now, but for, for Bitcoin to be a decade old, it could not have happened without them. Now, if you want to continue developing your society, though, you can't just let the army walk around everywhere, right? You, you start building a church and a school and an art gallery, and you start sort of getting away from that pure military you know, idea. You still need them, though. You still need them there for the attacks and um, to, to, keep, to keep sort of the, the rules of engagement safe and, and pure. Um, but you do start adding, if you, if you want other people to move to what is now no longer your military fort, but your village, your city, et cetera, you need to have reasons why you're going to encourage artists to arrive. You're going to encourage students to arrive. You're gonna encourage people who wanna start business to arrive, right? And in order to do that, it means you have to find a balance between the military as a form of defense versus them just walking around telling everybody not to eat seed oils, right? So it's 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 a balance that we, that we need to find over time. Uh, no, you're good, man. Like I get the yeah. point you're making. Like it's um, yeah, you need a blend of different types of people, right? Like you need some people to kind of uh, put people in their place a little bit and you also need people to kind of welcome in newbies and, and people who might make mistakes right. or or just might disagree with you um and, and kind of uh argue with them kindly like i i find max kaiser extremely cringe and uh, personally um and and i also not a massive fan of sailor or anyone like that i just i find them kind of it's like i'm being talked down to but lots of other people really enjoy their stuff and it's awesome because it brings them into the to the world of bitcoin yeah exactly yeah exactly uh you know one of the problems we have not problems but opportunities i don't know for bay area bitcoiners you know we we're on twitter and we're on meetup which is where a ton of bitcoiners are so that part's easy but because we're a casual meetup and because it's not like we're doing our part, but we want more normies to find out about Bitcoin and be able to ask questions. Because when you go, like when you look at any Forbes article about Bitcoin, it is wrong, right? It is, it is not going to be right. Um, so, so how do they find out about these local meetups where they can just ask any question? How does a wallet work? Where do I even buy you know, Bitcoin? Can I buy a fraction of the Bitcoin? All those things. The answer is local meetups. The problem is my neighbor is just a regular guy. He's not on fucking Twitter at all. And he definitely isn't searching for meetups. And so trying to figure out how to get in front of the eyes of pure normies, um, that's been a real obstacle for us. We don't, you know, we don't know what the right way to do it is, but because we want, we want them to have a safe space where they can, where they can actually show up and, and say, hey, but what about proof of stake? 
And that way X frog can say, oh, great question. Let me grab a beer. I'm gonna walk you through why proof of work matters and proof of stake, you know, is a shit coin. Um, but that, that's what we struggle with pretty regularly now is how do we get more regular people who just want to learn into a safe space where they can, where they can learn. If you guys got any ideas, let me know. Um, well, I wanted to ask you I, to play devil's advocate a little bit. I kind of feel like Bitcoin's already been watered down like significantly from the original intention of like cypherpunk toppling the central banking system. Um, like all these compromises that they've done with like AML KYC, um, you know, and like chain analysis, like stopping, you know, people from depositing coins that came from BISC onto an exchange, even though, you know, they, the person bought the coins in a way that maybe, you know, regulators don't like or whatever, but the coins are coins. Like if Bitcoin's fungible, they should still be able to deposit them regardless of the prior owner and what they did with them. Um, like to me, it, it seems like there have been huge compromises and possibly way too many normies coming into Bitcoin and watering down like the whole objective of what it was for in the first place. Do you have any thoughts on that? It feels like a lot of the examples you gave were outside of Bitcoin, right? They're, they, the actual, um, Bitcoin, the protocol and, and Bitcoin, the token that's gone on chained, uh, unchanged, um, you know, except for BIPs over the, over the years. And then governments and people are, are adding these things on the outside. I agree with you, but I don't see, because Bitcoin in some ways is a primitive, you know, and, and you, you do what you want with it and you can do a billion things. You can, you know, you can bank the unbanked. You can make it so people can escape, you know, you can just make it an investment tool. You can make it so it can send money value from point A to point B and sort of obfuscate um, the traditional, you know, the traditional systems, there's no avoiding the fact that more and more people are going to come in, you know? So I, I agree with you, but I think it's a positive, inevitable um, reality. The, the, the going the full blast, right? So Bitcoin's like the one asset where the people who, who own it want it to collapse in price because we believe so much in the system and the protocol. Like when, when my friends are like, hey, why is Bitcoin at 60? Or why did Bitcoin go to 40? I have no fucking idea. I don't care about the price. It's gonna go way higher than this. I don't know if it's this year, five years, but, but way higher, I'm confident in that. Um, but the underlying technology, if I woke up tomorrow and Bitcoin was $5,000 of Bitcoin, first thing I would do is check, is it still producing blocks? If the answer to that question is yeah, I'm buying fucking Bitcoin right then and couldn't be more excited about the price. On the flip side of that is we talk about, you know, how high can Bitcoin go? I'm not an investor, so don't, don't write this down. This is not financial advice, everyone. Can I get to $100,000? Yeah, I think we all agree on that. That's a boring number. We're not gonna get out of bed for 100K. Can I get to 500K? I think so, right? Just under that is if, it, if Bitcoin could reach the market cap of gold, which I think most just normal people are like, okay, yeah, Bitcoin. It's, digital gold, right? It's gut value. I'm not totally sure why. There's not a lot of it. And I can't really spend it at 7-Eleven. It's fucking digital gold. That puts it, I think, in between like three hundred dollars and $400,000 of Bitcoin. Okay. So I can wrap my mind around that. Million dollar Bitcoin. This is where I start to have some real dilemmas. For Bitcoin to get to a million dollars, people are suffering around the world. Financial systems are collapsing in a variety of nation states or war is causing a surge of demand for people who need these um, escape routes, right? So I can get my mind wrapped around how does it get to the price of gold. When you start going beyond that, you're getting into a world where like bad, bad things are happening that I don't know, right? When Bitcoiners talk about their citadel a lot, right? The, the, and this idea that inflation shits collapse around them, but there are these citadels now. That sounds like a horrible, horrible reality for a lot of people. So my, my hope is that it gets the price of gold and then we figure it out from there. Yeah, that's a good point. I think, yeah, you, like, yeah, hyper Bitcoinization, 
might not look super nice. <laughs> it might be because of really shit reasons where like people have had their homes taken from them and like money taken from them all around the world. It's possible, right? Um, and then it comes to that thing of like uh, you're kind of creating a new world elite, but it's Bitcoiners instead of, uh, you know, uh, others. Um, and is that going to be any better? Probably not. Because <laughs> usually once someone becomes elite, uh, their mindset changes. Uh, like a lot of people being assholes when they have a ton of money. Uh, not everyone's an asshole when they have a ton of money, but people who are is usually because of like when you get the ton of money, then you become more of an asshole. Like it's not always, you know, uh, like I'm sure like a lot of the presidents and prime ministers weren't born horrible people uh, or like, you know, uh, corrupt people, but then going through that system and gaining the power and having to change their morals to do so makes them those people. Yeah, no, they were nerds. They were nerds in your high school civics class, you know? And they just, when they graduated, they were like, I'm going to run for, uh, you know, city council. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it will be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, I think reaching gold would be, would be reasonable. Um, and you said, I mean, you said about like, getting new people to come along to the meetups, uh, free cake. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But um, having like free drinks always helps. I, I found like going onto telegram groups was good because um, we'd get people in London where it's like, uh, like a cousin or a friend of like someone on a Bitcoin telegram group had said like, Oh, you, you wanted to learn about it, go to that meetup and like, they'll tell you about it kind of thing. So I had a few situations like that where like new people would come in through that. Um, and then yeah, on meetup as well, like people, the website meetup website, people, you got a lot more people who were like newer to it or interested in like Bitcoin or crypto who'd come along. Yeah, meet, meetup's been, meetup's been, um, real strong for us. Um, yeah. I, I do still think there's that, you know, like my dad, if I said, check out meetup, he'd be like, I don't know what that is. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, I just, yeah. you know, especially in San Francisco, I mean, shit, you guys can probably see the wallets, but in the San Francisco Bay area, there has to be more wallets here than nearly anywhere in the world. Right. So I know there's Bitcoiners here. There's just crypto enthusiasts in general and, um, technology enthusiasts in general. Um, so, you know, I just have to imagine there's, let's say there's 10,000 Bitcoiners. That number is probably low. Um, a thousand of which would, would go to a meetup. Okay, so there should be a hundred people, you know, at our, at our meetups, just, just statistically, you know, just because there's that many people who either know or hold or have heard about Bitcoin and want to get a beer on a Wednesday night. You mentioned the uh, pandemic kind of slowed the momentum down. Uh, have things pretty much like normalized in, in the city or for, uh, for meetups are there still general? like, I mean, in general, like, are there still tons of restrictions everywhere or have, has it calmed down a little bit? Cause that yeah, might also know, still sure. be having a lingering impact. For, for, for sure. San Francisco is better than sort of described uh, in the meetup, but, but again, but definitely stricter than, you know, Texas or, or, or Florida were right now uh, you can go into any store, any restaurant you want, no, no vax, no mask. That's that's pretty recent. Um, schools have you know no more masks. They did it a little longer for little kids. Um, just the idea being some of some of them either had siblings or they couldn't have been back yet if, if their parents wanted to do that. But even that is now. Listen, if you, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. That said, who knows? Any given second, you know, they, they definitely there was a hand a while where they were pushing. What they were basically doing was pushing sort of the policing of this onto small business owners, right? So if you owned a bar, all of a sudden you were the person who was in charge of verifying somebody's health records and then assigning them to either sit outside because they're not allowed or sit inside, which, you know, I don't, I don't know that's the role of a, a small bar owner. Um, so that got a little weird. And I think you had just, you had a fair amount, you know, you had a fair amount of patrons and owners of small stores that just didn't, not that they didn't care or have an opinion on vaccinations or COVID, but just felt like it was beyond the rights of the government to assign them this task. And it was certainly beyond their rights to know, you know, the medical history of Lawrence. Um, but that hopefully is all behind us. Hopefully there's not another wave. And then now, you know, we, in San Francisco, there's a lot of social services. So I think we have more homeless people than others. Um, which also led to, you know, I think th those social services sort of broke down or got worse, let's say, during the pandemic. Then you have a whole layer of, of low income, you know, restaurant workers, janitors, 
now they're laid off and then, you know, some amount of those jobs just aren't coming back. I think you've seen sort of a, a pickup in crime um, because of all those things. But my guess is that if we look at any major city, it would be the same. Hopefully, listen, hopefully we're on the, we're on the upswing uh, of this shit, but not as dark as it's maybe been portrayed, but not, not amazing. Yeah, it's interesting. It still feels weird to me how like some places are, are literally still enforcing like masks. I think it's like Singapore you, at this moment in time, you can't talk on the train and you have to wear a mask because if you talk, you could be spread. And it's like in the UK, not like not, there's nothing. Like it's like no, it's like nothing ever happened. And then when I was in Brazil, it was like close to nothing ever happened. Um, like there was masks like in Ubers, I think it was, but that was kind of really it. And then and when I was there and um so at the beginning it wasn't like that but when i when i left it was so i find it just feels so bizarre to me that like you know like one part of the world's decided it doesn't matter but the other just decided that it's like extremely serious i still find it very it just it's like hard to get your brain around it it's like it's we all have the same scientific information so it's got to be political surely at this point like i can't imagine how it could be scientific if we all have the same information yet they're having drastically different approaches but anyway it's not a you know it's not a vaccine show but um but i get where you're coming from like i think i think the way things are enforced is messed up um and that's coming from a guy who has two of the vaxes okay.